Back on November 14th, it was reported by Sham Sharani that both Zach Levine and the Chicago Bulls would be open to finding Zach a new home. And while it's never been said outright by either the Bulls or Zach, it's pretty clear to most around the organization covering the team that this was a trade request. Zach was tired of seeing the Bulls lose, he didn't see a path forward in which they could be competitive, and while Zach had been in trade rumors for some time now in which the Bulls were taking and making calls on him to assess his value, this was the first time that Zach himself was open to going elsewhere. And ever since then, when Zach was on the court, you could tell he didn't want to be there. Wasn't really engaged, missing assignments, not hustling, his body language and demeanor said it all like he was just biding his time until the Bulls finally moved him and it didn't help that the Bulls continued to lose games, and lose games badly. When it really hit a peak after the Bulls' embarrassing loss against the Boston Celtics in that final in-season tournament game, a game in which Zach would end his night early due to his lingering foot injury and would finish the game on one of his worst stat lines in his Bulls tenure, going one for nine from the floor, two points in 25 minutes. The Bulls' season was at its rock bottom, its ultimate low, and they would fall to 5-14 and 14 on the season. And we didn't know it at the time, but that was more than likely Zach Levine's last game as a Chicago Bull. An end of an era, as it was announced last night by the Bulls' PR team that Zach will be out for an additional 3-4 to four weeks on top of the week he was already slated to miss due to his foot inflammation. And I know for those who are closely following the team, you already know why this is likely Zach's last game. But for those who are maybe a little more checked out on the season, but you're still watching the content to get updates on the team, then I'll explain further in this video. But first... Got to talk about our channel sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. I want to hear from those who have signed up already and what they think of the app, but for those that aren't familiar with Underdog, let me tell you about my personal favorite that I use on the app, and that's NBA Pick'ems. You can pick higher or lower on most players' stats and win money based on the ones you get right. You pick higher or lower, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night if you do five Pick'ems and get them all right. Last night, the Bulls game, I had DeMar scoring more than 21 and a half points, and of course, he hooked me up by putting up 29 points, and guys, they're offering viewers of this channel an exclusive offer. If you use the code BULLCENTRAL, you'll get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Who doesn't want free money, right? It's really that easy. It's also a great way to help support the channel as well, and I greatly do appreciate it. I'll leave a link to the site and the code in the description if you're interested, and let me know what picks you guys make. Now, the timing in all of this as it relates to Zach Levine's most recent injury is pretty suspect, because here's the thing. It was obvious to really anyone watching him play over the last few weeks that he was checked out on this team. And look, this doesn't take away from Zach Levine and everything he's done for this organization and sticking with this team through all the ups and downs, mainly downs. And I'll obviously put out a Zach Levine appreciation video whenever he is in fact traded, but it is unfortunate that his tenure with the Bulls is ending on a sour note. You can see fans are already starting to turn on him a bit. It's now masked by the fact that the Bulls are playing better without him and on a three-game winning streak. So it's led all of us to think, well, clearly, Zach was the problem and he needs to go, which isn't entirely true and not fair to Zach in the current situation the Bulls find themselves in. And of course, you probably all saw that picture circulating of Jalen Brown throwing a dunk on Zach Levine, in which he's making a straight face like, I hate it here. And after that, the Bulls put Zach on the injury report have continued to extend that timeline for something again i'm not a doctor but foot inflammation foot soreness to have that be given an extended timeline of over a month for recovery when normally inflammation or soreness type injuries are more day-to-day -day than anything and so again the timing of it all is a bit suspicious not saying that zach is faking some injury i do think the injury is genuine because he had been struggling with that foot before he was ultimately ruled out but the manner in which they're extending the timeline is a bit questionable. And the reason I say that is because, as most of you know, the majority of players who sign contracts this offseason in the NBA, most of them aren't eligible to be traded until December 15th, and some even as far out as January 15th. And while yes, the Bulls could execute a trade for Zach Levine with players who were already trade eligible, the likelihood of them being able to do that when the deal is going to need to encompass multiple players to match Zach's salary is slim. When a fair amount of players throughout reported teams that have been interested in Zach, they recently signed this offseason, and they're not going to be trade eligible until December 15th. And so the conspiracy theory is the Bulls have already found a trade for Zach. It's already been verbally agreed upon, but they're waiting until December 15th so the trade can be legally executed, and whatever team Zach is going to, they've asked for him to sit until the trade is made to avoid him getting injured between now and then. And it's also very possible that's what the Bulls want as well. They don't want Zach getting injured 
when they already have a deal in place and then the team pulls the trade deal because Zach gets hurt. But anyway, when the Bulls announced that Zach would miss an additional three to four weeks, which puts his timeline to return at the end of December, early January, it all but confirmed that Zach Levine has most likely played his last game with this team. Because even if they don't have a trade agreed upon in principle, even if they're still fielding calls and offers for Zach Levine, the fact of the matter is, it would be very unlikely the Bulls don't move Zach in these next three to four weeks. And if it's a trade that can't be made until January 15th, you're most likely going to see that injury timeline pushed out a little bit more as they near the end of the current timetable. Because at that point, if Zach doesn't want to be here, if we're going to see him hang his head low when he's on the court, if he's going to be checked out and not giving effort on the floor, you don't want him out there if he's going to negatively impact the team, especially when the team has been playing better without him. We've seen it throughout the NBA when players request a trade, which yes, I know that's never been confirmed to be the case with Zach, but I think we can all read between the lines. But when a player requests a trade, it's in the team's best interest to sit them until they are moved, so as to avoid the distraction of all the trade rumors and negative press, to not have it impact player morale when they know one of their teammates already has one foot out the door, and also just to avoid the risk of injury and lowering the player's trade value overall. That said, depending on how serious this injury is and the fact that the Bulls are now winning without Zach, that in and of itself is killing Zach's trade value, which already wasn't very high to begin with given he hasn't played well this season, but when there is already doubt about whether Zach Levine and his game can translate to winning, the question about whether in fact he's a winning player, when throughout his career that hasn't really been the case, whether that's fair to Zach or not, that's what teams are going to see. And now they see a Bulls team that has struggled greatly to kick off the season and are slowly starting to figure things out and win games when Zach is out. Yeah, GMs are going to question whether it's worth going after Zach Levine and giving up a lot to get him for a player who is on a max contract and still has four years left on his deal. Not saying there's no market for Zach Levine like Woj reported because that's ridiculous for an all-star player in his prime, there is going to be some sort of market, but his overall market value has decreased significantly with everything going on around the team and the fact that the Bulls are now playing well without him. I say that though, but I'm of the opinion that they already have a deal in place for Zach. Whether he's moved by December 15th or January 15th, I don't know, but I think they're holding him out until they're able to legally make the trade, and that's likely been requested by the team that he's being traded to, and it's why you're hearing these somewhat questionable injuries like foot inflammation or soreness with these longer than usual timelines. Of course, that's just my opinion with no inside information or knowledge to confirm that's actually the case, but either way, I do firmly believe that Zach has played his last game with the Chicago Bulls, which is kind of sad. I mean, we knew it was eventually going to happen, and it had to happen, not even just with Zach, but the core three of the Bulls, we knew it was eventually going to need to be torn down and blown up. And so I'm happy to finally see this era of Bulls basketball be done with. But Zach has done a lot for this team over the years. He's meant a lot to the fan base since being traded here in 2017. Been the Bulls best player for a good portion of that. The first all-star since Jimmy Butler. And it's going to be sad to see him go. But it's also time. It's going to be an end of an era, but an era that needed to end. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.